for your countenances and your support. We welcome those of our live stream that have joined us also. Your presence means a lot to us. We're in the Gospel of John. This will be our 16th <coughs> exposition of this book. We're going to be dealing with verses 40 through 42 of the first chapter. Now at this point, Luke begins to show us some key relationships between that Jesus developed in the beginning, personal contacts he had, and that he's going to use in his ministry in the world. These men that he's choosing will be the men that benefit the most from his teaching. In fact, they'll receive most of his teaching. And his in-depth exposition will be exclusively to them. So he's, as it were, hand-picking them, starting here. <clears throat> Eventually, he'll have a nucleus of 12 men that will fully represent him when he returns to heaven. He will endue them with special power and with transcendent wisdom. They're going to be the men through whom he'll build the church. <clears throat> now, just as God was selective about who he sent into the world, he had a lot of angels at his disposal. He had cherubim and seraphim at his disposal. He had the four living creatures at his disposal and perhaps other lofty personalities. But he was selective about the one he sent. Jesus was selective about the ones he used. When he was in the world, he really did not make himself available to everyone. In some places, he just didn't go. His ministry was in the land of Canaan. He didn't go to any other foreign land, any other foreign country. The greatest distances he traveled were to Caesarea Philippi, Tyre and Sidon and Gadara, and they were within the borders of the Promised Land. He chose disciples from the Jews, nobody else. Trying to train, he was selective. He chose disciples from the Jews, and consistently he ministered to them with a sparse number of Gentiles even being exposed to him. You, you would draw attention to it when they did. In fact, one of them surpassed the Jews in his faith, and he made particular note of it. <clears throat> One of his disciples is called Simon the Canaanite. I understand this does not mean that he was a, not a, off the offspring of Abraham. Luke refers to him as Simon called Zelotes, which was uh, member of the Zealots, which was a Jewish faction <clears throat> that were partisan for having uh, Jewish political independence. He obviously kind of dropped out of that group when Jesus called him. But I'm banking on the fact that because Jesus appointed these 12 apostles to judge the 12 tribes and priests to him, that this Simon <clears throat> was, a, was a Jew. Some think that he was, that there was another, the Canites, K-A-N-I-T-E-S. <clears throat> I don't, that was a Gentile body of people, but I don't believe that was the case. The point here is that in his earthly ministry, Jesus would concentrate on the Jews. Because that's who the promised, that's who were promised he was going to come. That's why he did that. All the prophecies concerning him were delivered to them. Mm -hmm. We're going to see the effect of Jews believing those promises. We're going to have an example of two particular people that were affected mm -hmm. by believing those promises that were given to them. A great mass of the Jews weren't affected by them, but there were some. Mm -hmm. There were some that were. 
Jesus chose people who maintained an unwavering interest in him. The only exception was Judas, which was chosen for another purpose. Now this is our text, John 1, 40 through 42. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. brother. He first findeth his own brother Simon and saith unto him, We found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. The work is underway. Yeah, now one thing you'll perceive in Scripture, and I, you're, perhaps you're familiar with Scripture. If you're not, well, you, you do need to do that as soon as possible. There was always distinctions. From the very first, there were distinctions. Cain was distinguished from Abel. Seth was distinguished from the other sons of Adam. Enoch was distinguished from the other sons and daughters of Jared. Noah was distinguished from the other sons and daughters born to Lamech. Shem was distinguished from the other sons of Noah. Abraham was distinguished from the other sons of Terah. Isaac was distinguished from Ishmael. Jacob was distinguished from Esau, the other son of Isaac. David was distinguished from the rest of his brothers. When it came to preparing for Israel's sojourn into Egypt, Joseph was distinguished from the rest of his brothers. See, God honored these distinctions. If you know, if you're familiar, with you, you can't, you can't miss this. The distinctions, right, starting right out with the first family. There was a wedge driven right down the middle of the family. And it was that way with every single generation. There were some chosen, some weren't. Some used, some weren't. Most of them not. Few of them were. See, every play right up to Jesus, that's the way it was. And then now we're starting out, we're seeing Jesus doing the same thing. He's distinguishing between people. He doesn't look at the human race as just one big melting pot. From one point of view, he did view it as a whole. So far as provision, dying for them, providing salvation for them. But so far as use, divine use, God has always been selective. He has never proceeded on a volunteer basis. He wants someone to lead Israel, he picked out Moses. He wants someone to build a tabernacle, he picked out a whole of bed. And, and, his, and the, and the uh, I forget the name of the other person, but he, he, picked, he picked them out. He's always been selected. You want a high priest, he picked out Aaron. Judges, he picked out the judges. Prophets, he picked out the prophets. A forerunner for Jesus, he picked him out. See, God's always been this way. Yeah. And so it, no one is wise mm -hmm. in trying to paint God or Jesus as being non-selective. Yeah, You've got to read over a lot of the Bible, if not all of it, to even come up with such a notion. You say, well, how does that affect you? It affects you this way. I hope I'm one of the chosen. Amen. I want to be in that category. Yes. And I'll tell you that the people he chooses end up wanting to be chose. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the way God works. Mm -hmm. They may be threshing wheat behind a rock someplace yeah. because of oppression, but yeah. when God picks out a judge says, this is the man right here, ain't go down and notify Gideon. This is the man that's going to be the judge here. I'm going to use him to deliver Israel from the Midianites. Find out Gideon had been doing a lot of thinking about this. He said, oh, where's all the miracles? And the angel didn't say this, but they were about to begin. Same with Moses. Where's all the miracles? They were about to begin. Same with the apostles. Where's all the miracles? They were about to begin. Yeah. See, that's the way God is. 
There are those who relentlessly teach men that the lost take precedent over the saved. Any place Christendom exists, no matter where it is, what continent it is, what city it is, what family it is, this is taught that the lost take precedent over the saved. But God did not appoint a shepherd for the lost. Did he? He appointed for the sheep. He didn't appoint a high priest for the lost. The high priest is for the family of God. And when Jesus was here, that's who he paid attention to. Didn't mean he ignored everybody else. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about an emphasis here. All right, we have two such men before us. Two men that were with John when he said, the Lamb of God, the whole Lamb of God, they, they left John, followed Jesus. Now, John writes, one of the two, now there's selection again, see. One of the two which heard John speak was, was Andrew, Peter's brother. Why, well, you'd have thought it would have been Peter, wouldn't you? He's the one that ended up the chief apostle of the twelve. You'd have thought, you'd have thought he'd have been the one. But see, here the last is first, and the first is last. Andrew. The, they remained with John. The rest of the multitude evidently kind of went away, <laughs> but they they stayed. They stayed. That's why they had an opportunity Amen. that the others didn't have. Amen. And they followed him. Now, to this point, I want to identify what we know about these two men. What do we know about these two men? Well, the first thing we know is that they were standing with John the next day. The Ah, that tell that distinguishes who's interested. It's the next day. That's that's a thing that distinguishes. See, these kind of people. It's the next day. There's a lot of people during the day, they, the flamboyant day when everything's really big. There's a lot of people involved, but the next day, <laughs> that's another thing. They're with him the next day. That is, they were protracted hearers. Second thing, they heard John say, Behold the Lamb of God. They were concerned hearers. I don't know whether everybody heard John say that or not, but they did. Third thing, they followed Jesus. They are persistent followers. Fourth thing, when Jesus asked them what they were seeking, they were attentive followers. They didn't say, huh? They, you know, they knew. Fifth thing, they asked Jesus where he was staying. Not what he was doing, not how much money he had, yeah. not what people he liked the most. Where are you staying? Mm. They were expressive followers. Jesus told them, come and see. So they're privileged followers. Uh -huh. And seventh, they came, mm. saw where he stayed and remained for a day. They rewarded followers. See, those are the things we know about these two yeah. men. Uh -huh. yeah. Now, it would be good if you were known by those things. He said it'd be good. It would be good if you were known by those seven things. There you have, and these two people doing the, and this brief synopsis of them, you have faithfulness, vigilance, and godly focus lived out right there before your eyes. Let me name them again. Diligence, faithfulness, vigilance, and godly focus all lived out. Now, I've noticed over the years, now well in excess of 60, that there is a generation of church people who have never received very much because they're lacking in the area, in these areas. Yeah of diligence, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
faithfulness, vigilance, and godly focus. They are what we would call spiritual scatterbrains. They're inconsistent. Sometimes they're up, sometimes they're down. Sometimes they're working, sometimes they're sleeping. Sometimes they need the Lord and sometimes they don't. They're just in and out, up and down. They're erratic. They're unstable as water. What's the result of that? You really don't get very much. God doesn't set a big table for people like that. I didn't know this for a while, but I know it now. He sets a small table for those that lack interest, like maybe an agricultural lesson. That was it. Some people heard Jesus speak, and they probably thought he was a farmer. You know, they didn't say, he didn't say anything to them mm -hmm. except this is the kingdom of God's like this, and he told them about farming. Yeah. That's the kind of table now he sets for disinterested. Mm -hmm. There's no human methodology that can assist one in obtaining these characteristics I named. Mm -hmm. Faithfulness and vigilance and diligence. And see, there's, there's no... You can't learn this from anybody on earth. Amen. There's no course that can teach this to you. You can't have a special Sunday school class that teaches this. Mm -hmm. This is something that comes from the heart, a heart that's been touched yeah. by God. And I will tell you that one of the great failings of our day is a kind of preaching and teaching and a kind of scholarship that does not produce that kind of follower. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. We can't shift the blame on a bunch of other people. Yeah. Uh -huh. This is what's happened. There's been a gospel preached mm -hmm. and a method of teaching that it just, you can't produce. It's like trying to make a house out of cardboard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It just, just doesn't work. Amen. And if you think it does, wait till it rains. See, there are all kind of people, brethren, they're living in spiritual cardboard houses. Yeah, uh -huh. They aren't substantive. They're weak and flimsy, and any little trial knocks it down. Mm -hmm. Any little, any little difficulty makes them almost give up the ghost. Yeah, uh -huh. Why is that? Is that something we all experience? No, it isn't something we all experience. There's some of us that it doesn't make any difference what comes, we will not chuck in the towel. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. We've proved it now by the way we live. This is not just talk. Uh -huh. We'll go through fire and water. Mm -hmm. Some people refuse to do it. Mm -hmm. And for that reason, they're limited. Mm -hmm. Now, what I'm saying is those kind of people have been produced. They are the result of a certain approach mm -hmm. to preaching and teaching. Jonathan. Yeah, particularly about cardboard, it's also particularly known for not being able to handle wind. That's right. With, the, with all these, <laughs> these weekend sales list, we love people right. putting out cardboard, and it's always out in the street and everything. It's never by the, it's never where it's supposed to be. So I thought yeah. about that when you mentioned it. Yeah. Uh, Jesus, Jesus said this. He said the words I speak now, they're spirit and life. You pay attention, they'll do something in you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's what he said. People say we should seek. That's not what he said. That's not what he said. He didn't say we ought to seek first the kingdom. He said you either do this or you're out. He has not, this is not a suggestion, but it invariably is preached that way as though this was like a suggestion. Uh -huh. Talked about like a checklist, like, seek first the kingdom. Check. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. what's next? What's next? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> 
first means preeminent, yeah. not number one, yeah. preeminent one. Amen. Hey, you know, Israel, there was times, times past, now Israel, they were the right people, they had the right promises, yeah. and they had the right God, but yeah. it said of them that they limited the Holy One they of Israel. They limited the Holy One of Israel. Yeah. Yeah. You could have this great big container, a vital substance, but if you have a nozzle yeah. that's a sixteenth of an inch in circumference, mm -hmm. <laughs> you're not going to get much. That's right. That's right. See, preaching and teaching combined with the heart uh -huh. produce the nozzle. Yeah. Uh -huh. If you do by faith, you get a big nozzle that's which right. pours a lot into you. Yeah, you receive a lot. Mm -hmm. If you don't, it doesn't make any difference if there's an abundance of supply. Yeah. If it's just a little bitty outlet, mm -hmm. that, that's all you get is a little bitty. Yes, and the, the catch is you can't survive uh, on a little. No, you may survive on manna, but you do get enough to fill you. Uh -huh. yeah. When Jesus gave them bread, it was enough to fill them. Mm -hmm. See? You can't get full if you have a little appetite. All right, this, uh, one of these two men, his name was Andrew. Now, no other gospel covers this event. This is John's the only one that does. Matthew and Mark, the first time Mark, Andrew is mentioned is when Jesus calls Simon and Andrew. That's the first time Andrew is mentioned in Matthew and Mark. The first time... Luke mentions him as when he was selected as an apostle. So John, is, he's talking about before. Mm -hmm. John's giving us a little peek into something before. Yeah. The event obviously took place before the call, before Peter and Andrew were called. This event uh -huh. Uh -huh. took place. Tells you when, before something happens before you're called. Yeah, amen. This kind of teaches you this. Uh -huh. You're just not called out of the blue. You know, it's something precedes the call. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. The appointment of them as members of the 12 apostles, mm -hmm. that's where this thing was headed. This is how it started for Peter and Andrew. It confirms that at the time of their calling, they were not ignorant of Christ. Yeah, that's right. Right? So it wasn't they, they, they knew something about Christ at the time. Andrew knew that Jesus of Nazareth was the Lamb of God. He knew that before he was called. He knew that. And he spent a day with him. And before he was called, Peter also was told by Andrew and his brother, that his brother, that he had found Christ. In the next verses will confirm. So they, these two men were informed of who Christ was before he called them. Does this tell you why I preach the gospel to every creature? Why? Yes, amen. Yeah. See, people that are called of God have to know about Christ first. Yeah, amen. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the, the, these people you're talking about, I mean, Christ was prophesied about, so they knew, they kind of knew what to look for. They knew what manner of person right. would be, and That's that right. can explain a lot of why there's confusion in our times. People don't know what to look for. That's so right. They, well, they're given different ideas, but yeah, it's like if they know who to look for, they can identify Christ when he's present. That's right. Mm -hmm. And when he's preached. Yeah. Andrew says he was Simon Peter's brother. Uh, this book was written later when Peter had gained some kingdom prominence. See, so that if at the time that it happened, mm -hmm. this wasn't as significant as it was after Peter had been, you know, exalted in the kingdom. So Peter actually learned about Jesus from his brother. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> he was granted preeminence in the kingdom. The keys of the kingdom were given to him, but his brother got to Jesus first. Yeah. Though the first was last and last was first. Now here's he finds his brother Peter. He first, first he did, first he did it. The first thing he did is, 
find his brother Simon. So what does a person do when they're come in contact with the real Christ? And, and they know they have. What do they do? First thing they do, they got to tell. Yeah, got to tell somebody. Right. See, there's countless instructors telling people what to do. Once you convert, here's what you do. Now, they do this to attempt to bolster the institution of choice. They're trying to capitalize on new believers because they're more exuberant than the other people. See, most churches don't have exuberant mm -hmm. members, but when you have new believers, always exuberant. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So the church wants to like capitalize on that and bring them into this ice cold atmosphere where Jesus isn't at work and say, now you're part of us, you know. Yeah. I actually remember people saying this to me when I was young, they pretty soon you'll be like us, you know. And this is how it starts out. The young folk are real enthused about Christ, but then pretty soon they'll be like us. And I thought, oh, no, you know. Oh, that, that's a depressing thought. <laughs> they didn't say, see, the, the Pharisees, they didn't try and gobble up these people. Mm -hmm. They were a sect. Huh? But the Pharisees weren't trying to gobble up Andrew and Peter. Uh -huh. The Sadducees, they were a sect. They, they weren't trying to recruit yeah. Andrew and Peter. The scribes, they were kind of a sect. They weren't trying to. Why not? Because Jesus doesn't make the kind of people they want. Mm -hmm. yeah. You really got to see that. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that you'll not have a bunch of people knocking at your door trying to get you down to the first church of the Frigidaire. Because they know you'd really disrupt things if you were there. I thank God for this. I thank God that when he touches a person's heart, they don't become attractive to people that are immersed in fruitless religion. <laughs> now, this is not an account of an explosion of people coming to the temple, regularly to the temple. It were, the temple attendance apparently did increase, but it was when Jesus was there. Mm -hmm. That's when. So they weren't trying to... Jesus wasn't the means to kind of bolster the attendance at the temple. I mean, that, that wasn't it. Yeah. John said, I'll tell you why he's writing. He's writing that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and... This is the part that's left out, yeah. see? Uh -huh. This is the part that's left out when people quote this. And believing you might have life through his name. Amen. Almost without exception, the first part of that statement is quoted without assenting to the latter part. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. And. Yeah. But as, as a single objective, it's got two parts. Yeah, that's right. uh -huh. If both parts aren't there, the objective isn't met. Amen. So believing on his name, part one. Life yeah. through him, part two. Right. If you don't have the life, you don't get any benefit from the former. Right. The aim is not realized until both parts are met. Now, it must be remembered that this believing here, that's experience, was actually pre a preliminary believing. It'll be brought to maturity after Jesus dies and is exalted to the right hand of God. But this is not the kind of faith that has been once for all delivered to the saints. That's why I want to deal with this a little bit. When Jesus was here, going about doing good, he didn't know that we're oppressed with the devil, there are 17 references to people believing on Jesus. And there are several references where it says, many believed on Jesus. I give them there to you. Yet this is not the kind of believing that justifies. I want you to yeah. want you to see this. This doesn't produce spiritual understanding. It didn't last long. When Jesus was crucified, none of these people stepped up. There wasn't an outcry from the 
these people as to what happened to Jesus. Nicodemus spoke up once when they were trying and said, do we do this thing to an unjust, you know, is this right what we're, what we're doing? But that was, that was it, that was a solitary voice. So this was, a, I call it a preliminary mm -hmm. believing. Even when Jesus was crucified, there's a small group of people who were even there. Uh -huh. There were some women, small group of women that stood afar off and watched the events. At the cross itself, it, it, there was a few people there, he named who they were. It was his mother, Jesus' mother, mm -hmm. his mother's sister, Mary Magdalene, and John. Mm -hmm. Of all the people Jesus ministered to, this is it. Mm -hmm. This is the grand congregation. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Is that's not the kind of believing that saves the soul. This is not the faith once delivered. It was real, but it was like a bud, uh -huh. not a flower. Yeah, amen. Yeah. I'm not saying it wasn't real, no. but it was a it was a beginning beginning faith. It wasn't a mature. That's right. And a beginning faith won't get you in. Uh -huh. It get you started. Yeah. It get you started. Uh -huh. Won't get you in. So he first finds his own brother Simon. That's, now that's sort of a prelude, a miniature, a prelude in miniature of something Jesus said would happen. Mm -hmm. He that believes on me, as the scripture said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Mm -hmm. It's the nature of true spiritual life to express itself. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Now this is like a kind of a prelude. This is giving you an idea of it that you really can't be knowledgeably in Christ's presence and keep your mouth closed. Yeah. Uh -huh. Amen. Knowledgeably in his presence. Yeah. See, some people thought they were in the presence of a carpenter. Uh -huh. Other people thought they were in the presence of just a teacher. Uh -huh. Some people thought they were in pres just in the presence of a neighbor from Nazareth. Yes, but they didn't see him as he was. But yeah. when you see Christ as he is, you know, that believing causes river to flow out. When a lame man receives strength, he picks up his bed and walks. Right, right, yeah. See? When a blind man receives sight, he looks around. Right, yeah. When a deaf man receives his hearing, he pays attention. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah. That's what happens. Why is it this way? That uh, this torrential river flows out. It's a means of survival. You've, to survive, something not only has to be pouring in, something has to be pouring out. Yeah, yeah. That has to happen. If it doesn't, you're going to have this stagnation. Yeah. Must be poured out. See, there is, there is a form of religious routine that's like holding a pillow over a sleeping yeah. person. Uh -huh. yep. Suffocates them. That's right. There's a religion that suffocates. Yeah, yeah. There is no. Uh -huh. It'll do it. It'll suffocate you. You can't be letting people tell you how wonderful things are if they're not wonderful. Uh -huh. yeah. I don't. I'm not even interested uh -huh. in where a dead person goes to church. Uh -huh. I go. I, don't please don't tell me. Uh -huh. See this. It's, I want to know whether a person has really been with Christ or not, uh -huh. and I can tell. Uh -huh. And you you can too. Yeah. So, Sometimes it may be kind of a tough pill to swallow. It may be a person may be pretty close to you, you know, but you can tell. And you find this uh, an example of it in Andrew. Mm -hmm. He found his own brother. Yeah. He hunted him down. Mm -hmm. He found him. What did he say? We 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 found the Messiah. <laughs> we <laughs> boy, that's some words. We found the Messiah. Basic Bible English says, we've made discovery. Amplified Bible says, we found or discovered him. The word translated found means to come upon or hit upon to meet. It's after searching. See, we found, we've been looking, we've been looking, we've been looking. Like Anna, she knew who had been waiting, waiting, yeah. waiting, looking. We found what we were looking for. We found him. 
that this finding is always preceded by a search. Mm -hmm. Remember Jesus talking about a person that was seeking goodly pearls, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. and they found a pearl, a great price. Yeah. That's what happened here. Andrew said, "We found the pearl. We we found the pearl. We found we found the forerunner. We found the forerunner. That was a goodly pearl. But ah, we found the pearl of great price. Now, yeah, it's good you find someone that can identify the Savior. It's better when you find the Savior. Amen. That is like some people are surprised by what they find. Like a man finds a treasure in a field he didn't even own. Yeah. He kind of stumbles on it. There it is." Some Gentiles, they just kind of stumbled into it. Yeah. Found of him, they sought him, they found of him, they, Jesus was found of them that sought him not. Amen. See? Amen. So these were men who believed the promises that were written hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine someone in the United States of America getting enthused yeah. about some promises that were spoken like back in like 800 yeah. A.D.? Yeah. And they said, oh, man, look at this promise here. Back there at 8, 5, 6, 7, 800 AD, we say, well, you know, what? Give us something that's relevant. What's up to date? These are the kind of people these were here. Yeah, they knew that God's word, God couldn't lie. Yeah. They read these promises hundreds of years before, hundreds of years before they were written. But they'd been looking. And all of a sudden, Andrew said, we found him. Mm -hmm. We found the Messiah, mm -hmm. the Christ, the, the single person mm -hmm. that the prophet said was going to come. We found him. Yeah. yeah. You know, we had that same reaction oh, when we yeah. found him, too. I mean, before you, you thought you had found him, but yeah. when you really found oh, him, you know. Amen, yeah. amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, John the Baptist prepared the way for him. See, he, that, that's a commentary on his ministry. Yeah, amen. His ministry enabled these people to identify who the prophets were talking about. And then he, right. point, he actually pointed them out. There he is. Right. Mm -hmm. Somebody pointed him out to you. Yeah, amen. I don't know who it was. That's not of any consequence. But somebody did. Somebody alerted yeah. you to who Christ really was. Amen. And when it dawned on you, what did you do? You had to find somebody. You had to find somebody. Amen. So they believed the promises. Well, it, he says he, he brought him to Jesus. He didn't say he gave him directions to Jesus. Because Andrew knew where Jesus was staying. I remember, he asked, where, where, where are you staying? Yeah. So he knew where he was staying and hadn't even been with him for a whole day. But he didn't say, now, let me, give me a hunk of paper and I'll draw it out for you. How you get there. said he brought him. Yeah. He brought him. And I was just interested, just out of curiosity, what that word brought, what that meant. Meant to bring, conduct or accompany somebody, bring them along, take with one. It's not impersonal. Mm -hmm. This is the same word used in reference to Jesus several times. He uses this word. It's not given a directive. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's accompanying. Uh -huh. Amen. Yep. Like you, when you're a parent, you have little children, <laughs> yeah. and they have to use the facilities, mm -hmm. so you bring them. That's right. Yep. You bring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You bring them to the facilities. Mm -hmm. Now listen to what Jesus said with that in mind. Mm -hmm. Other sheep have I, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. Yeah. Uh -huh. Take with me. Amen. I must bring. Mm -hmm. And they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold of one shepherd. So Jesus, Jesus personally mm -hmm. brings Amen. people. Again, it says that he is bringing many sons to glory. Take it, take it. It's not that he's there, head that way. He's bringing them. Yeah, amen. And it says that Christ suffered for us that he might bring us 
to God. Amen. Now, Jesus said, no man comes to the Father but by me. means I, right. if I don't bring him, he doesn't get there. Amen. That's, right. That's what Jesus is saying. And so this same language is used in regard to the Holy Spirit. As many as are led, the same word is used, is led. I don't know if you ever thought about it. If you think about this, this should be quite edifying. The Holy Spirit participates with you. He joins with you, and he leads you yes. to mortify the deeds yeah. of the body. Right. This kind of work lifts us out of the dark room of mysticism yeah. and conjecture. It's a very real participation with deity. Amen. He does not just point us in the right direction or deliver us an outline of what we ought to do. Mm -hmm. Like some people think, he actually conducts us to the Father. Amen. And when we at last we actually go to be with him, he's going to come back yeah, yeah. and bring us to God. <laughs> How's that? He brings us to God in the Spirit. Now yeah. he's going to come back and bring us to God in the new body. He's going to bring us to God. Amen. They behold, yeah. I and the children that thou hast given me, we're all here. That's right. Bring. Mm. Amen. Now, some people are brought to a fictitious Jesus. Mm. They're brought to a Jesus that's not real. Mm -hmm. How do you know whether he's real or not? Whether he can do what he said he'd do or not. Yeah. That's how you know. That's right. If Jesus says, if the Son make you free, you're free indeed, a person's brought to who he thinks is Jesus, and his life's still out of control, what's the trouble? Yeah. That's not the real Jesus. Amen. Amen. You get in trouble sometimes saying this, but this is the truth. Somebody's got to say it. That's right. Somebody's got to say it. See, the Jesus people are brought to is too often too small. Mm -hmm. You're too small a Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's too much like humanity. Mm -hmm. too, and too little like God, yeah. didn't have any power. Mm. The bottom line is that these fictitious Jesus aren't the Jesus that, that God sent. Yeah. Well, there he is. Andrew brings him to Jesus, and Jesus looks at him. Yeah. Mm. God has got the attention of the Lord. Mm. When Jesus looked at him, Basic Babylonian English says he, looking on him fixedly, just stared at him, having looked upon him or looked intently upon him. So it wasn't a casual look. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine Jesus looking at you? Yeah. Remember when he looked at Peter? Mm -hmm. Remember what that look did? Mm -hmm. yeah, amen. God said of old time, look unto me and be ye saved, all ye ends of the earth. Just yeah. catch, if you can catch the look, can you just catch him looking at you? <laughs> <laughs> it'll have an effect. Yeah. Remember what happens when God looked down upon the Egyptians? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> mm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just looked at them. That's right. <laughs> now, what was happening here when Jesus looked at him? Well, I'm going to tell you what was happening. God was giving Peter to Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's what was actually happening here. He was among those of whom Jesus spoke in his Gethsemane prayer, mm -hmm. them which thou hast given me. Yeah. Four times he says it, them that thou hast given me. So at this point, he's, he's going to give Peter yeah. to Jesus. He spoke of these people during his ministry. John 6, 39, he said, all which the Father God giveth me yeah. will come to me. In this case, he was brought to him by Andrew. Mm -hmm. They belong to God. Yeah. That's what Jesus said. John 17, 9. Thine they are, mm -hmm. and you gave them to me. Amen. So God had already, you know, he'd made the decision already. He gave them to Jesus. That's what he's doing. When, when Peter came to him, mm -hmm. and Andrew came, that's what he was doing. He was giving these men to Jesus. Amen. They belong to him. Remember, Peter is the primary one of the 12. Jesus said, I'm going to give you, talking to Peter, I'm going to give you 
the keys to the kingdom. He's the preeminent apostle of the twelve. Mm -hmm. And who have men chosen to malign and mock? Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah. Peter. Yeah. That's the one. They, mm -hmm. yeah. they talk like they're smart mm -hmm. huh? when they're really stupid. Here's a man that God exalted, Jesus exalted, and they're they're trying to pick him apart, yeah. like he like Peter was like them. But in the world to come, yeah. Yeah. Peter's going to judge those people. God's going to vindicate Peter, mm -hmm. not them and their lousy sermons. Yeah. Yeah. He's not going to vindicate them, and they'll probably be like those. Jesus told the Philadelphians they'll come and bow down at his feet and worship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're going to admit we were wrong. So it's just best to just uh, do that kind of admitting. Amen. Now, he says, Thou art Simon the son of Jonah. He said, God, Jesus knows about you. He knows, he knows where you come from, and he knows all about you. He said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. That was that that Simon. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of Simons. It was a common name. Yeah. I know which one you are. You're Simon, son of Jonah. Now notice what Jesus didn't say. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't say, You are brash, hasty of speech, vacillating, and unable to control yourself. Yeah. That's what men say. Right. That is what yeah. men say. I know you, you're always putting your foot in your mouth. I've heard people say this now. But that is not what Jesus said. And it is not what men ought to say. The name Simon means one that hears and obeys. That's what the word Simon, that's what the name Simon means. I'm going to give you a new name now. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which by interpretation is not water. That's right. It's not water. Uh -huh. It's a stone, yeah. Yeah. a rock. Yeah. When it says the, which by interpretation, we, we would say translation. Uh -huh. That's what Jesus would make of him. Mm -hmm. That's how Jesus saw him. So it's, it's wrong to think of Peter as anything but a rock. Amen. That's right. That's not, it's not right. You may, right. you may think you got it right and point out this and pointing out that and say he sat with the Gentiles and that just shows what kind of person he was. You may, but after all said and done, yeah. you're going to have to say, but he's a rock. Yeah. Jesus said, a rock. Uh -huh. yeah. That's what you are, a rock. Uh -huh. Yes, there's one time Peter did deny Jesus. Mm -hmm. He was under an unprecedented attack by Satan. No one will ever know the glory. Uh -huh. What was happening to Peter that night when Satan had asked uh -huh. to sift. Oh, when Satan sifts, you've been sifted. And he denied Christ three times, but the words hardly fell from his mouth till he repented. Amen. And he never, yeah. the rest of his life, he never mm -hmm. denied Christ again. Amen. Why not? Jesus made him a rock. Right. Yes. I just now thought about the fact that in his death, his words did come true. That's right. Peters. Uh -huh. That's right. Well, I thank God for Peter. Now, who would have, who would, now, if you were a man, who would have thought that this, like your brother coming and getting you and bringing you to Jesus would end up? <laughs> you have no idea what will happen to you if you get in Christ's presence. You, yeah. you don't have any idea. You spend time with Christ, walk by faith, live by faith, and trust in Christ, you have no idea what yeah. you may become. Amen. Mm -hmm. Good. I'm talking about yeah. something good. 
you bring him. That's yeah. right. Uh -huh. That's right. Yeah. yeah. That's right. When you bring him, he'll look pretty crude material. That's right. Yes, Brother Jason. Part of the passage, it, it says they heard John yeah, speak. They heard. John the Baptist. <laughs> so it, it's kind of amazing if you if you look down at the end of this passage, and it, when son, when uh, Andrew says to Simon, "We found the Christ." It's, it's kind of amazing that he had come to that conclusion. Right. But, but he didn't come to that conclusion just like on his own. He had listened to the forerunner. That's yeah, exactly right. right. He had, so first, these men first listened to John. That's, that's right. Amen. And John said, look, the Lamb of God. That's right. And he pointed Jesus out to them. Amen. That's right. And because they had listened to John, mm -hmm. they came to believe and follow Jesus. Amen. Amen. If they had rejected John, oh, yeah. yeah, that's right. Now it says later about the Pharisees, they didn't listen to John. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so guess what? They didn't listen to Jesus either. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah, amen. Yeah, amen. Yeah, that that tells you a lot about yeah. John. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was not self-centered. Yes, Sister Sarah, go ahead. Uh, if Jesus did not bring the Father, you cannot see the Father because Jesus said, no one comes to the Father but by me. That's right. Amen. Good. Yeah. I can remember when I first saw that that by me meant accompaniment. I can remember when that first kind of registered on my spirit. And it was, uh, why did they have enlighten me? Yes, Brother Justin. Through me, like he's yeah. like some sort of passageway, but no, he actually brings you. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be lived out when yeah. it comes again, he's going to bring us. Yes, yeah. Mr. Barber. There's a sense of dependency in that, too. We're not left to our own resources to make it to the destination. Yes. That's right. Yes. Yes. Amen. Think about somebody giving you directions, and there's a sense of uneasiness and yeah. a timidity <laughs> until right. you get to the place you're going. Yes. Make sure, okay, yeah. now I got here. But uh -huh. when you're following someone, uh -huh. you can have confidence. Yes. Especially when he knows the way. Yeah. Yeah. We haven't been this way before, but yeah. he's leading us, and so we can have confidence. Confidence that we're in the right way. Amen. 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 Well, this is what makes Jesus the good shepherd. Mm -hmm. Yes. A, a yeah. good shepherd leads you That's right. to the green pasture. He's yeah. leading us to God. Amen. You yeah. notice what Andrew said, we found the Messiah. That was enough for Peter. That's right. Yeah. So he'd, he'd been looking too. Yes, amen. Yes, Sister Jordan. I was thinking on that word way also. Uh, people think, I think commonly in terms of Jesus will show you the way. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I am the yeah, yeah, way. Right. So if you are in him, uh -huh. you are on the way and in the way. And yeah. that, talking about this highway of holiness, where man who are fool should not err therein. Mm -hmm. If you're in Christ, that is, that is your surety. Amen. It, it could be, He's, there's not going to be any error in him. Uh -huh. So as much as we are in him, we we have confidence Godward. Uh -huh. Now I was also thinking, we're talking about these different brethren and uh, the different things that they did as it contributed to the purpose of God in salvation and in the judgment. How all of these things are going to come together, the connectedness of all of these personalities, including ourselves, those who have believed the word yeah. and, mm -hmm. and have justified God in believing Christ. But from the very beginning, think of how much time it's, as we would count time, mm -hmm. it's going to take to make all the connections from Adam to Abraham to mm -hmm. Noah to Moses to the, the 12 uh, tribes of Israel to the dealings of God with the nations, to John the Baptist, to Christ, to the disciples, to the apostles, to the early believers, to the, I mean, all the way through. Yeah. And these connections, I mean, we, we wouldn't have a number large enough to define that, and yet it's all gonna come together, and when it's all done, we're gonna see a picture of God in his ways. Yes, amen. Amen. It's interesting that by own genealogy, on my father's side and my mother's side, they were the first Christians of record. 
And others weren't necessarily bad people, but these were my on my father's side. They were apparently the more even more devoted. But the, what came from that? Yeah, that's all right. There were a lot of people born until, but Enoch. Uh -huh. yeah, when, yeah. E when Enoch come along. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. So that's the same. If you're in Christ, most likely you'll find somebody uh -huh. in the family line that was awakened. Yeah. Uh -huh. yep. Or it's possible you might be the first one. I mean, that's possible too. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's possible too. My my first uh, wife, mm -hmm. she was the only one in her family tree. Mm. She was it. Yeah. Came to the Lord, came to Christ. But she was. It was easier for her to come than for church people to come. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I I trust that you uh, got a lot from that. Can see. The benefits of being exposed both to Scripture, yes. then John the Baptist, uh -huh. then someone who was in Christ's presence, mm -hmm. then Christ Himself. Yeah. See, there's. Yeah. <laughs> you mentioned at the beginning of your lesson that God was selective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it looked by this account that Andrew was the initiator of this meeting with Christ and bringing Peter, in, in a, and it has that kind of appearance about it. We learn later. That there was a pre-work yeah. that was taking place because that's Jesus right. said, "No yeah. man comes to me except the Father, which right. said me draw him." And He also said, "You did not choose me, yeah. but I chose you." Yeah. And that's not just the way God deals with with the twelve. That mm -hmm. is the way we all come. Deals. Yeah. See, we heard the gospel, we believed it, mm -hmm. we submitted to it, yeah. we trusted Christ. But behind the scenes, God was the one working Amen. to draw us to Him. So. And which is more edifying to think you chose Christ or to realize that he oh, chose yeah. you? Yeah. 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 So he's hand selected. All yeah. saints yes. have been hand selected. Amen. 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 Mm. And then Jesus, Jesus knew that. Yeah, that's right. So he says, you're, you're, see, that's why he made this announcement. Uh -huh. yes. That's why I mentioned he was, he, God was giving him to Jesus. Like this text. But it does say, as many as were ordained to eternal life. Believe. Yeah. Believe. Boy, I know. <laughs> Amen. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> but when you're inside, that's not a doctrine. It's an explanation. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> that's how you got in. Yeah. Yeah. And who's going to stop God? I mean. That's right. Yeah. After that faith came. Hmm. Christ later when he yes. said, Who do you say that I am? He said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the God. Jesus said, Flesh and blood didn't reveal that. God, yeah. yep. otherwise, how would you know Jesus yeah. was the you Christ? Christ? Yeah. You might want him to be, but yeah. thou art. He didn't say, I hope you are. Yeah. Thou art. It was, yeah, my Father in heaven yes. reveal this to you. That must have been a great comfort to Peter right there. He revealed it to That's you right. too. No man can say Jesus is Lord. That's it. Saved by the Holy Spirit. Amen. How about that? Yeah. Amen. Those are tough verses for some. <laughs> Anyone else? All right. All right, Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this text. We thank you for Andrew and Peter, brothers, chosen to be apostles and come to Christ. That's, that itself is a, quite a commentary on your power. We thank you for them, and we pray that we will be able to share in that type of grace. In Jesus' name, amen.